And we now turn our attention to the situation at the University Hospital of the West Indies, which we've highlighted before has reached full capacity for COVID hospitalizations. I'm now joined in studio by Dr. Carl Bruce, who is the medical chief of staff and consultant neurosurgeon. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Now, up first, how does this situation compare with what the hospital experienced in the second wave in February, March of this year? Thank you very much, Janelle, and thanks for having us here. Um, I think to go to the heart of your first question is that when we first, um, we had the first wave of COVID and we peaked, um, we were averaging about 31 patients per day during that first peak in 2020. And obviously we thought that that was a crisis situation. And then the second peak in, in February, March of this year, we were peaking at over 40 patients, 41 to be exact. We are now maybe about 25% into the third wave, and we are already seeing 60 positive COVID patients in the hospital exceeding our bed capacity. And the challenge with that is that previously, we were seeing less non-COVID patients in the hospital requiring care. But now that we have a lot of patients whose care was postponed because of the initial wave who are very sick and need to be in hospital, we cannot expand the bed capacity for COVID patient. And so early in this third wave, we're having severe challenges. All right. Now, yesterday, the hospital announced that 96.1% of its COVID-19 patients were unvaccinated. The other 3.9% had received one dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. I know it's early days yet, but let's analyze these statistics for now. What can you tell us? I think it's very clear. Um, you know, the data doesn't lie. We are not seeing people who are vaccinated in the hospital. We are seeing unvaccinated COVID positive patients, and we have seen some patients who have had only one dose or one recent dose, and they're still in hospital. It therefore means that if you're vaccinated, you have some protection. And I believe the data worldwide has shown this. And so I believe because of the crisis that we are now having, it's incumbent upon us as a hospital and as physicians to say to the population, look, if you get vaccinated, you will be protected. You will not get critically ill and you will not die. Or your outcome is going to be better if you're vaccinated. And this early in the third wave, we have to go to the public now and say, look, we're having a challenge. Please go out and get vaccinated and get a mask on. 554 people uh, recorded positive yesterday. It is expected that it is going to get worse before it gets better. How are you in terms of resources to deal with what's to come? Well, we're very, very worried. You know, many, many of the, the doctors at our task force at the university um, took their memories back to the pictures that we saw in Italy and in, in, in India. And I believe that is why they've said, look, we have to t change strategy and speak directly to the public. Because if we don't have the oxygen, if we don't have the personal protect protective equipment, if we don't have beds Do you have to manage it? these patients. Do you have it? At this time, we are above capacity for both COVID and in the non-COVID areas. So we have divided the hospital in two separately, and we just don't have enough beds in each part of the hospital. Added to that, as you use more oxygen, then the flow to the distant reaches of the hospital is also low. And so the oxygen supply begins to dwindle as we get an increased number of patients. And so we're saying to the public, it's time for us together as a country to act to try and make a difference now. All right. So, but you did not respond to the question. You have sufficient gear like PPEs, masks, and all these other medical supplies that you needed? Because I remember um, earlier this year, there was an issue. There is still an issue. Worldwide, there is an issue. And at the present time, I'll tell you our current strategy is that we're thinking we have to put some more temporary structures, some more tents in some of the car parks to try and assist. And what we're saying is if the numbers go up, the already stretched PPE and oxygen will definitely not be sufficient. What about staff? Do you have enough staff, Doc? That's a real challenge for us. I, I believe we have outlined our strategy using graph to show people what happened when you have the first wave, the second wave. But there are two important peaks that you have. You have those people who their chronic care has been interrupted. And when that chronic care is interrupted, they then have to come to hospital and they require more care. But on the other graph is the healthcare workers. They get mentally ill. They get burnt out. They have economic burnout. They're tired. They're fatigued. And they start doing double shift. And they start getting COVID. 
And therefore, even though 96% of our doctors are in fact vaccinated, they can't stretch. We have a limited supply of nurses. They are being recruited. They are still being recruited. And so it's a challenge. And we are saying to the public now, it's time for us to act and time for us to try and get this graph leveled so that we can save some life and avoid some dark days. So much to talk about, so little time. Your final comments. I think if I would say to my fellow Jamaicans tonight is, one, the university hospital need your help and your support. We want those who have recovered from COVID to come into the hospital and donate plasma so we can use those antibodies to treat some of the more ill patients who need help. But we are also asking the public to wear your mask and to continue to observe the public health measures. But the most significant impact is for those who take a vaccine. The vaccines we've given over half a billion doses worldwide. It's safe. It's over a year since the studies we've been given vaccine. And it's time for us to act to save our parents, our grandparents, and our elderly population also. Thank you so much, Dr. Carl Bruce, Medical Chief of Staff at UHWI and Consultant Neurosurgeon.